Testing one, two, three. Testing. Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. My name is Dan. This is Daily Adventure number 675. <laughs> Day two, I have changed the title of the painting. You may have noticed it was being called City Sidewalk, Sidewalk something. And now it is called uh, Sidewalk Chess. So who knows if that'll be the final title, but that's what I'm calling it right now. All right, always good to be back, uh, back on location. Um, I, could, I could finish this at home, of course, if I needed to. I have photographs, but uh, all of you plein air painters will understand. It's just not the same. Let me turn you for a minute to the scene that I'm painting. Just about, just about like that. There you go. Hey, Monique from the Netherlands. Welcome. Good to have you on board. Let me see if it's five o'clock. It's late at night there. Ten, ten. It's about time for you to go to bed, right? <laughs> Good to have you here, Monique. Um, so there we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. So hopefully the auto exposure will adjust. So. Um, I love painting on location. As I was saying, I, I could have done it from home, but it's just not the same. Now, here's what happened, and I'm, I'm still, evidently, I'm still learning a lesson in this regard. I actually thought I learned it last week, but evidently I did not. Um, after the sun goes down, after the sun went down last night, um, I had my light. I have a really nice LED light over my easel here, battery op operated LED light, lots of power. And I used too much of that power evidently last night. Um, so when I got home, discovered my painting was noticeably too dark. Now, fortunately, the very next step, typically in my painting at this point, is what I call the fuzz layer which of course is a, is a process that lightens, makes lighter the whole painting. Um, all right, so this gives me an opportunity to talk about scumbling again. Let's talk about scumbling. Just for a minute, let me point you at my easel, I mean at my palette, I mean. I think you can see it. Okay, yeah, two brushes, of course. Tiny bit of titanium white and a tiny bit of ultramarine, a little more white. Okay, so my brushes have paint on them, but they're quite dry, right? These, this is a, if you will, this is a dry brush technique. Yes, yes, that would be a perfectly appropriate name for this kind of painting that I'm doing right now. It's a dry brush. It's also called, called scumbling. This is what scumbling is. It is um, opaque, light, usually. Can you, can you scumble with dark? Well, not, in my, not on my planet you can't. <laughs> because on my planet you're never supposed to get, that is to say following my school of thought, you're never supposed to make your painting darker using opaque paint, right? Does that make sense? No, I'm not, I'm not going to repeat that because I'll, I'll come back to it soon enough. No doubt you get darks with transparent paint. I'm talking here about oil and acrylic painters. If you want some part of your painting to be darker, you act like a watercolorist. 
and you use transparent paint to get darker. You use opaque paints to get lighter. Okay, so on my planet, all scumbling is always a getting lighter process. If you want to get darker, you're not scumbling, you're glazing. It's gonna, is it, do I have to pause and let that sink in? Uh, I probably do. Let me say it again. If you want your painting to be darker, then you're going to use transparent paint, right? And even if you brush the transparent paint on with this brushy manner, that's called a glaze. That's not called scumbling. All right? All right. So scumbling on my planet, <laughs> not everybody understands this, but if you watch me, you understand that. Um, scumbling uh, is always getting lighter. So, okay, so let's talk about scumbling. All right? What you see me doing now is scumbling. It, and, and this is important if you want to be a good painter. Scumbling is a good shortcut technique for adjusting large areas of color or and or value. Okay, which I told you just a minute ago, I said I, I got home last night, really when I looked at my painting this morning, I went, eek! <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever have one of those moments? Look at something you did the night, the day before, and you, when you look at it, you go, eek! Now, in this case, it wasn't because I made beca a, a, a mistake in painting. It was I made a mistake with the light that I had on my easel. The light was too bright. Therefore, I painted too dark. So let that be a lesson to you and me both, <laughs> me especially at this moment. Okay, so I discovered that the painting was too dark. Scumbling is an excellent solution to that problem. When you have you know, a broad area of your canvas that needs to be shifted either in value or color. You with me? I'm waiting for that to sink in. Okay. When a large area of your painting needs to get lighter or shift the color, I should say. Never darker. That's a glaze. All right. So if some part of your painting needs to get a large part needs to get lighter, you scumble. That's what it's good for. But put on the brakes, hang on. There's a great big butt coming. Can you tell? Can you hear that? There is a great big butt coming. And it is this. Although scumbling is a good shortcut method for achieving color shift or light shift, it leaves a texture on the canvas that is not pleasant. And you see how much I, I've just scumbled this whole thing. Everything but the trees and I'll even do some up there. Well, doggone you say. <laughs> so what are we supposed to, what's a feller or girl feller to do, <laughs> right? All right. So the solution is, let me see if I can get my, uh, get my iPad monitor to start showing up you guys, your chats. Okay, so here's the answer to that. Let me, re again, repeat myself just so that we're clear. Scumbling, good for shifting color or shifting lighter. Yay! Scumbling, unpleasant finished effect or texture. Boo. All right, so here's what you do, and this is exactly what you're going to see me doing. I mean, I would rather not do what I just did, but now my painting is lighter and it's working better. It's lots of atmosphere, for sure. <laughs> Too much, so. All right, so here's what you do. After scumbling, you paint what I call real painting. Now, some of you, are, if you're a student or a beginner, you're you're looking at me say, um, what's real painting? That would be a good question. And not, a, not one to be ashamed of. Uh, most, I mean, I remember when I started out painting about 20 years ago, so fairly late in life, figure, think about it. I'd been at, I've done everything else in the art world except oil, oil painting, 
oil acrylic. I avoided them like the plague for decades. So when I started, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't know what real painting was. All right, so what is real painting? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate it on my palette here real simply. Am I aimed in the right direction? And just, just to kind of exaggerate to make a point. Here's real painting. You take your brush, you pick up some paint. You pretend this now is my canvas, my painting. You go to your canvas and you put paint down and you're done. That, ladies and gentlemen, is real painting. Now some of you, if you're a beginner, if you're a typical beginner, you don't know that that's real painting. And so you think real painting is what I just did with scumbling. <laughs> you think real painting is rub, 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 brushy, what I call brushy, brushy, brushy. And boy, am I glad to be here to, to what's the word? Disavow you of that tragic notion. <laughs> to, to straighten you out. <laughs> you didn't know you needed straightening out, some of you, but you do. Painting, real painting, is not about brushy, brushy, brushy. That is not how real painters paint. And again, no, no shame if you don't know this, but there is shame now if you don't believe me, because <laughs> I'm here to tell you, do, you do not, the act of painting is not, I repeat, not the act of putting paint down on the canvas, like I did right there <laughs> for a moment, and then brushing it around. Brushy, 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 I call it. Brushy, brushy, brushy is the antithesis essentially of interesting marks. You do not put paint down and then rub it around. Unless you're scumbling, which I just told you, does not leave a pleasant texture. Real painting is you pick up paint, you deliver it. Okay, I'll do a little bit, kind of thin, but here's painting. Boom, done. I'll go the other way, finish the windshield. That's a car, that's the roof of a car across the street, okay? amateur beginner wannabe student painter is you put down a mark like this and then I'm not going to do it because I don't want to ruin it then you pick up a brush and you go brushy 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 okay I am I am death on brushy 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 I tell my students sometimes when I'm being particularly snarky <laughs> which I try not to be too often I can hear bad painting with my back turned now unless unless the, the, the painter is scumbling, which again, I've already told you, does not leave a pleasant mark. I don't call it real painting. It's a real specific technique, but it, it does not leave a good mark. All right, so back to what happens if you need, like I just did, what happens if you, you have to shift either a large color area, so this is not a little bit, you know, it's when there's, like I just did, when there's a lot of your painting that needs correcting, what do you do? You scumble. Then what do you do? Then you come back and do what I'm doing here, which is real painting. Another name for real painting is sort of one stroke. Now, I didn't even know till I ran into some person, this is several years ago, that was doing this, this sort of country is that the stuff. Same on yes, sir. It sure is. Yeah, I had to had to come back and finish it. Wow, that's nice. Thank you. Really nice. Thank you. Um. So, all, do you see all these lighter marks that I put down here? That's one stroke. Ninety, what? Ninety-five percent, probably, of the strokes in, throughout my entire painting process are are single strokes. You put the paint down and you leave it. That's the end of it, okay? So I, for, so I didn't know I was gonna get into this <laughs> so intensely, but this is a really, really good principle for all you beginners to learn. The act of painting does not consist in, of, in the act of brushing paint around. That's scumbling, and scumbling is a very specific and limited is of limited value, I mean, say it that way, right? So th this, on the other hand, what I'm doing now, one stroke, single stroke, you come to your palette, you pick up some paint, you go to your, you go to your canvas and you, you go like that. That is 
it. Now, why do students, most of them, the great majority of students, get, get trapped in this, this bad habit of what I call brushy, brushy, brushy? I'm not sure, but I have some guesses, okay? Let me tell you what they are. So you can, if you can identify yourself by these, then that will help you make an authentic commitment to, to stop doing it. Number one is insecurity. You, you make a mark like this, like this, and like this, and then you second guess yourself. And you say, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. That's probably not right. That's probably not right. That's probably not right. <laughs> I'm sorry, the spirit of mockery just comes all over me sometimes when I'm trying to teach. I've had a lot of students, thousands of students over the years. <laughs> I'm quoting them right now. That's probably not right. <laughs> so, since you feel like it's probably not right, then you, then, then you say, well, maybe it'll get better if I brush it around. Maybe it'll get better if I brush it. So you go, brushy, 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 brushy. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not painting. That's amateurish destruction of painting. <laughs> I'm being really harsh. Why? Because I want you to be a better painter, doggone it. All right. Um, the other reason, some of the other, so num why do people, why do students do brushy, brushy? One is because of insecurity. That's probably not right. Maybe I should brush it. <laughs> Reason number two is because you suffer under the delusion, wrong impression, that that's what good painters do. In order to blend their colors, they put down one color, then they put down another color next to it, then they blend the two together. Okay? Some of you right now are saying, What's wrong with that? You mean they don't? What? What do you mean? <laughs> and uh, I would love to point you to my fellow YouTube art teacher, Mark Carter, C A R D with it as in dog, C A R D E R. Mark Carter has a website called uh, Draw Mix Paint. And he's a very droll fellow. I completely opposite personality to myself but I really like the way he teaches and just start watching some of his stuff for a while he, he is he explains what I'm not sure demonstrates so well how not to do what I just said I said don't do it he ex demonstrates how why don't do it don't you don't good artists don't put down you know red here and yellow here and then blend in between to get orange good artists put red here yellow here, mix up, and put orange here. That's a slight exaggeration, but not much. It's essentially the truth. And uh, Mark Carter does a brilliant job of trying to um, get his students to, to cease and desist, shall we say, with that horrible habit. Okay, and then reason number three, why do most, and I do mean this, most, the great majority of students do brushy, brushy, brushy. In fact, I'm, it, this is so ubiquitous that the last time I really went off on this subject, which was several months ago, I actually had somebody left a comment later in my, in, in my video and, and they said to me, well, I never did that. I always and you know, <laughs> it's so funny. The tone didn't come across right to me. Um, and, and I may be mistaken, I have not seen this, but, but <laughs> I, I'm so convinced that most students do this that I didn't even believe one, when one of my viewers said, well, I never did that. Instead of me believing them, instead I actually believed they, did, they misunderstood what I was saying. That's how rare it would be. In other words, I'm, my point is I'm trying to make, not to put anybody down, I didn't know this person, but it would be so rare for you to be a painter, a beginner painter, however many years ago you started, and for you not to go through a 
brushy, brushy, brushy stage. Okay, so there you go. Don't don't be don't feel ashamed. We all did it. We all did it. Okay, so now, but after today, you are not going to be numbered among the brushy, brushy, brushyites. <laughs> the tribe of the the tribe of the brushyites, <laughs> the unwashed masses, <laughs> yearning to be free of <laughs> huddled mass, huddled masses of brushy, brushy, brushyites. <laughs> Oh man, um, like I said, it's so ubiquitous. It's just, it's just something you have to grow out of. So for some of you, I hope this, in fact, is the day that you're going to grow out of it, whenever you're watching this. And again, if your response is, what? I never heard that before, that it would be a perfectly appropriate and honest response. And I would say, ignore me to your own at your own risk. All right. Now, again, what am I doing right now? I thought you, I thought you said you can't brush it unless you're scumbling. So once again, this area down here, I wanted it to, to be even more pale, so I'm shifting it lighter. You follow me? No brushy brushy except when scumbling. And scumbling is, you after you scumble, you have to do something else, which is what I'm calling real paint single stroke specific real painting because this is not a pleasant texture all right so i've already demonstrated for you all these all these accent all these highlights let me come down here now where all this area has been scumbled right so after scumbling which we all it has to be done sometimes I would rather not have needed to do this today. Do you understand? That's not, not a normal part of my painting, but my, my painting got too dark last night. So let me show you what you have to do. After scumbling, I'm trying to mix up, right now I'm, I'm over here on my palette mixing, I'm trying to mix up this color. It's a little bit too light. I want it slightly, slightly lighter than what's there. Um, that was too... Oh, still not... Oh, now I've... Well, it depends on the week. Um, and, and recently, five days a week. <laughs> recently. Yeah, did you see me when? Last night? No, I'm not even never that. I'm trying oh. to figure out the best way to say this. Oh. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Are you making, or are you just, yes. Is this, uh, how does that work? With? Oh, um, here, read this for starters. And then normally I have a clipboard out here with that people can sign, leave, place a bid on. Okay, so you, you go off of your painting, not, do you have something else you do, or do you just paint? No, no, I just paint. I mean, I teach, but that's not my career's painting, not teaching. Teaching is my community service. What, um, what do you teach? All kinds of drawing and painting. At Jerry's Artorama, do you know where? There's only one art store in town. Michael's not an art store. AC Moore is fun. It's not an art store. There's only one art store. Where, it's where called it? Jerry's Artorama on Wake Forest Road inside the Beltline. Oh, yeah. That area is so growing. I teach, I, so I teach there. Okay, so you're able to. Okay, I see, what, yeah. I see how you make it. You so make it work that way. the reason I don't have my clipboard is because I sold this painting last night. So I, I didn't bring my clipboard out tonight. Now, what do you tonight. average on your paintings? Eight hundred dollars, huh? unless eight hundred, unless it's in a gallery, then it's two thousand, twenty-four hundred. How much do you profit off of your drawings? I'm trying to figure out. Hundred percent. That's awesome. Well, I mean, no, I have shipping and sales tax and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, I'm not. I don't have to share it with a gallery. That's nice. I might have, yeah. So are you an artist? No. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 you're just a you're a business person. Good for you. You're curious. I try to be. Very good. Thanks for asking. Feel free to ask any more. Oh, if I ask them, I will. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so while I was talking to that sweet young lady, um, I just did real painting. Oh, I was up a little high, wasn't I? You can hardly see it. Let me zoom in here just for a second. You can, I'll do a little bit more. But, um, 
but essentially now I'm doing real painting on top of the scumbling. Now, listen to me. And I'm, I'm, by the way, on the way down here today, I decided, you know what, I need to have a sketch pad with me because way too often in the recent days, when I'm teaching out here, when I slip into real teaching, I need to draw a diagram. So I don't have a piece of paper, so just picture. Um, let's imagine that you just scumbled this much of your canvas, about a, a five by five inch square of your canvas just got scumbled so like I'm maybe blowing it up that means you need to come in I'm using a big brush and real paint not five by five inches but you need to do real painting on top of the scumbling the scumbling can continue to peek through around your brush strokes is this making sense so you don't you don't <laughs> cover up the whole thing that you just did. So that's what I've just done down here. Um, all of this area suffered scumbling. And then I came back with these brushes and I did a bunch of marks. And by the way, let me just point you here. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm rendering. Get it? Is bricks in the sidewalk. So that's what I'm trying to um, render, emulate, imitate. Uh, in, in this part of the painting is a brick sidewalk. All right, does that make sense? I hope it does. I want to get off this subject. I'm tired of it. No doubt you are too. But that was very important teaching, whether you feel like it or not, <laughs> whether you agree with me or not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm like one of those high school teachers that, you know, when you're taking their class, you hate them because they're hard and they're kind of mean and everything. And then decades later, <laughs> you realize, doggone, I learned more from that teacher. <laughs> okay, and I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind serving that role in your life. <laughs> I'm willing to be mean <laughs> a little bit. I'm willing to be a little bit mean if it results in your progress as an artist. All right. <laughs> um, so I've got quite a bit of that to do. Let's, let's go to another AR. So I scumbled this building right here. It's still pale. It was pale blue. I made it paler blue. Are you with me? Uh, so that area also needs. So it's scumbled. That means it's unpleasant. I, I hope that I hope you've got that firmly in mind. Scumbling necessary evil <laughs> it's it's a sometimes a necessary way to paint but it's not you don't it's not your preferred way because you'd rather do real painting instead quote unquote real painting which is what I'm doing now single stroke I, I, I some I sometimes call it backhoe painting you know big earth moving machine a small earth moving a bobcat Okay, bobcat painting. Your your brush. Let me let me get my. Your brush comes down here. With it, with your scoop on your bobcat, you pick up some paint. Then you back up. Boop 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 boop. You dump your paint. Then you go back for more. Ba 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 ba. Pick up another batch. Boop 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 boop. <laughs> Everybody around here thinks I'm nuts. Well, they're, they're, you guys know I'm nuts, but anyway. All right, so the, stop calling it a brush. Oh, I forgot to tell you the third reason. The third reason why people, most, almost all students, intuitively paint wrong. Intuitively paint wrong when they start out. There are three reasons. One, insecurity. Two, they think blendy, blendy, blendy is how you achieve blending, false. And number three, the third reason that I think they do it is because these dang things are called brushes. <laughs> you're looking at me stupid. <laughs> I mean, a lot, not the, like I'm stupid. I don't mean you're stupid. You're looking at me like, of course they're brushes. Here's why I think people, students paint brushy, brushy, brushy. The reason is because the thing in your hand is called a brush. And in virtually every other arena of life, 
when you have a brush in your hand, what do you do with it? The answer is brushy, brushy, brushy. You brush the dog, you brush the floor, you brush your suede, you brush your clothes, you brush stuff off you, you brush your hair, unless you're like me. <laughs> in one pass, you know, you brush, well, I have granddaughters living with me. Morning, it's, it's hairballs on their heads, right? It's not whoop and you're done. It's not a sink, no, it's like worky, it's brushy, brushy, you know, with mom and grandmama. Brushing, ah, ah, brushy, 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 brushy. So that's the third reason I believe, and I, I know I, I might be wrong about this, but I, there's something to it, I believe. Um, the reason almost all students invariably start out painting wrongly, brushy, 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 is simply because this thing's called a brush. When you paint your house with a brush in your hand, what do you do? You don't go, you don't do, you don't do bobcat backhoe thing, boop, 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 boop. No, you don't. When you're painting your house, you go like this. Right? All right. So glad I got remembered that I forgot, forgot that. Third reason why um, almost all students start out painting very poorly and doing brushy, brushy, brushy is simply because it's called a brush. All right. Now this area that I have just done right here is, is a, at the moment, is a good example of proper painting. Let, let's, let's continue up here for a little while. I hope I remember to back that camera off when I leave this area. What I want you to see is single stroke. One stroke, one stroke, one stroke, one stroke, one stroke. And yeah, there's this, there's this kind of artsy, craftsy, kitchen table, country painting thing called one stroke. Uh, by the way, nothing wrong with it, nothing wrong with any kind of craftsy, everything, everything's good in its place. Um, and some of you might actually benefit by, by actually taking a one stroke class because in fact that is, as you can tell, as you've heard, that is precisely how real painters do paint and how you should paint. You put down a, the backhoe analogy. This, this brush right here in my hand is still full, if you will, full of paint, right? As soon as it runs out of paint, what do I do? I go back to the, oh, I go back to the pile on my palette. I load it up, then I come back up to my painting. Like so, and again, 95, 99% of my, all of my painting is done in this exact manner. One stroke, virtually no um, blending, virtually no blending in the entire painting. Yep, that's true. All right. Now, again, if I hadn't beat that to death by now, I certainly have by now. <laughs> And they are congratulating me. I remembered to zoom back out. <laughs> now, let me talk about my particular painting and problem and so on and so forth. So I have unfortunately just extended the amount of time that I need to spend on this painting by a good deal. If, you, if you're getting the feeling like, wait a minute, I mean, after scumbling, you have to go back and do real painting over the everything you just scumbled? Yes. That doesn't mean I have to, no, no, cover the whole thing. I let scumbling peek through here and there, but this is all generally an unpleasant texture. It's, do I need to talk about that? I, I hope not. I don't want to. Not much, just a little bit. You, some of you are saying, well, I think it's a nice texture. Um, um, I just want to pull rank on you. That's all I want to do. I just want to say, well, no. Now, listen to me. Anytime I talk like this, I, I always have the ghost of some young person who earned an, a, a master's of fine arts degree last year, and their whole thesis show was nothing but scumbling. But you need, I always think that's probably somebody, one of you probably has a niece or an aunt or a daughter or something like that who fits that description. And they, they, their whole, the professor loved it. She got high marks. You know, you need to understand that <laughs> anybody getting an MFA is, for, you have to drink the Kool-Aid to get an MFA. 
and, and what Kool-Aid? The art establishment, and the art establishment is not into beauty. They're not about beauty. They're into politics, philosophy, uh, propaganda, and, and uh, expressing themselves, okay? I'm not out here painting to express myself. What a funny, <laughs> funny thing. <laughs> I'm out here to, not, as you can tell, because I'm trying to create something that people enjoy looking at. Yeah, so I, anyway, I was saying, yes, suddenly with all this scumbling, indeed, I have forced myself into a place where I've got to do a lot of uh, painting that I didn't really want to do. I had no choice. Softening some stuff here. Trying to avoid the dreaded dotification. <laughs> you regulars know what that means. You newcomers, welcome. You'll hear all this stuff. It all comes around little by little. Let me take a minute and just for fun and show you guys. I know there's been some of you that have joined us in the last few minutes. I'll point you down the street just for fun. Again, the scene that I'm painting is um, just about like that. Pretty close to that. Let me back up a little bit. Now there's a construction tunnel happening down there. I eliminated that completely because it's quite unsightly in my opinion. Anyway, so that's more or less the view I'm painting. Beautiful evening as you can see. And just about this time of day as well. When I got here last night, yeah, 6.30, this color. So I'm try uh, many of my paintings are decidedly twilight, dusky. This one, I want it to be uh, like what we're looking at here. Um, um, more of um, late afternoon lighting, cool shadows. That's why there's so much blue in here. And the, and the sunlight that's on these buildings, I don't want it to be quite as yellow as some of my other paintings. Because this is, this lighting right here is the, the lighting that it, it attracted me. Now I find, hang on, I'm, I'm doing too many um, hard edges. And I need to come in here and do some soft edges. In a way, uh, <laughs> in a way, um, my fuzz layer, as you can see now, is, in a, is a form of scumbling, right? Yes, it is. And that's why, that's why the fuzz layer is never the, the last word. It's never the last thing that I do on a painting. <laughs> my te techno technology holder there is in my way. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's nice atmospheric. That's better. My, my uh, fuzz layer got sort of short-circuited a little bit ago. That's better. That's better now. I like that. I, whoops, I may come. Brushes falling down. I may come back and do more scumbling later. Now, here's... This is a Dan Nelsonism. After doing all of this soft edges stuff, I find a good opportunity for for pencil. And if you're new here, welcome. Good to have you on board. Uh, please do please understand that using black grease pencils <laughs> in oil painting is not traditional okay in fact I, I always imagine that somebody watching me who's an art student maybe in high school or even in college and they go back to school the next day or the next semester and they're doing a painting and they and they, and they whip out a, a pencil and start scratching on their painting I can imagine some professor what are you doing <laughs> so please understand um, unconventional <laughs> and, 
and uh, yeah, you would be in the embarrassing position of having to say, well, Dan Nelson does it. <laughs> and he would say, what the blankety, who the blankety blankety blank is Dan Nelson. Surely your professor would not truly have such an attitude, but yeah, probably she would. <laughs> All right, so here's my guys down here. Actually, let's, let's do something different. Let's come down here and do, do a little bit of work on these chess players. That'll be fun. I'm going to do more pencil later. Uh, for those of you who are new, it's uh, the name of the pencil is Jumbo Jet Black. Can you read that? Jumbo Jet Black, by G manufactured by Jerry's Artorama. Jerry's is a, a nationwide um, art distributor. They do more, more than half their work, I think, is on over the internet. And they have a physical presence in. I don't know, 15 or 20 cities across this, across the country. All right, let's do, do some scumbling on these figures down here. Not only do I, I like um, the idea of people playing chess and like the, you know, the sort of the psychological atmosphere that that lends to the painting. I even like the, hello, thank you. I even like the, the physical position that chess players assume. The postures for some reason it takes me. All right, and I'm, this is this man is black. If you want to be politically correct, m knock yourself out. African American. This man over here. Why his mount? He's he's <laughs> Caucasus American. <laughs> is the parallel, not Caucasian. <laughs> Caucasus. It means his ancestors evidently came from the Caucasus Mountains in Central Eastern Europe, because that's what Caucasian means. <laughs> I'm being a real something, philosophical, smart, Alec, smart person. Anyway, never mind. I'll try not to get in trouble too much. <laughs> Already enough. All right, so now we have some cleaner brushes here. I'm going to mix up a lighter flesh tone and come and do some just some little touches this young man evidently he has his index finger here slightly raised above the rest of his whoops that doesn't that doesn't work that just my my brush slipped and ruined the effect What does that mean? It just means I have to work on it some more until I have the effect that I want. Likewise, his left arm, and I, I did look up and see this pose yesterday when, when these two players were here. It's his left arm across in front of his body uh, draped half on and half off the table. Again, I think, I think a, a fair little bit of a nape of the neck there underneath his hair and above his collar. Um, but nope. It's not working. Okay, now this is good for you to see. Now it is. You know, how do you feel? How do I feel when this kind of thing happens? Well, first of all, I feel pretty darn human. <laughs> and I, f I feel kind of irritated, like, oh man, I should have been able to nail that first time. Surely, a little bit of disappointment, like, oh man. It just means I need to back up. So now I've got some 
whoops, that's way too, uh, way too chroma, way too intense color. So much out now. I'm not going to erase with a rag, I'm going to paint with a rag. Big difference, right? When you erase, you turn off your brain, except for the angry part, and you just rub because you're mad. That's erasing, okay? Painting with a rag is you're still thinking. <laughs> brain still, critical visual faculties still engaged. And you go slowly because you're thinking as you, as you rub. All right, that, that might work. So down with the, uh, by the way, by the way, by the way, let me zoom in here real quick because you hear me say much, you hear me say often, uh, you get dark with transparent color and light with opaque, right? That's one of my most common expressions. I also say every rule can be broken. You break the rule when there is a, the word is a countervening. Sorry to always be expanding your vocabulary, but there you go. Don't come to me if you want third grade conversation. You, you violate a rule. Every rule can be broken. And you, you, break a rule when there's a countervening or opposite a principle or rule that, come, that comes into play. And um, that rule, you get, you get dark with transparency. Um, there is, because right now, I know you can't tell this, but I am making his face darker using opaque brown paint. Now, why is that? The reason is because when you're doing portraits, now this is not exactly a portrait, but it's a figure, okay? So as I guess I should say when you're doing figures, oh, don't worry, we're gonna stick, stay here till we get it right. Um, when you're doing faces, um, Oftentimes, transparent darkness is just too powerful. So you have to tone it down. So that's exactly what I have just done twice, <laughs> is I used um, opaque dark paint. All right, I'm getting closer. I am getting closer. I am going to stick with it until I succeed. Um, there is another word you should know, at least the principle you should know. It's Italian or Latin, I don't know which. Sprezzatura. I'm saying it like it's Italian, of course. I think it is an Italian word. Believe it or not, so if you look it up, S-P-R-E-Z-Z-A, sprezzatura. Um, it comes from the Middle Ages comes from the, the world of the king's court. Back in the day when there was royalty. And sprezzatura is a word that came to mean the manner in which courtiers, people who appeared in the same room with the king, right, in the same court, yard, court, <laughs> any room with the king, they were expected to behave, as you can rightly imagine, they're expected to behave in certain ways. Certain behaviors were approved, certain were disapproved, and you don't want to go in the second category because if he's having a bad day, of course, you might lose your head. So, sprezzatura is one of the words that, that came to be used to describe the airs, the manner that a courtier was expected to maintain if he appeared in the same room as a king. All right, and here's what the manner was. Essentially, light and airy. I, I can't remember, it's been a while since I looked it up. The, if you look at the, 
that would be interesting to look at the um, etymology. Uh oh. Moment. Is it entomology or etymology? One has to do with <laughs> bugs, one has to do with language. <laughs> and I'm having a senior moment. I can't remember. I believe it's etymology because I think ent is bugs. Anyway. That would, be, that would be a fun one to look up. What is the etymology of sprezzatura? Because I think it might have something to do with that very word airy. Light and airy. All right. Now, let me, let me continue because this is, this is not only fun, it's good. It, it, it relates to your painting, my painting, our painting. Okay? Sprezzatura is... is now let me hang on a second. Let me, I need to really concentrate here for a second. Yeah, I think that's about right. All right. Um, when a courtier appeared in the same room as the king, they were required to behave in a light and airy manner. So... I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember stuff and I'm trying to paint at the same time. This guy's arm is too big, unless he's a real bodybuilder, which is unlikely. <laughs> Especially because he's big with Jess. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I just, it's it expressed in, or reflected, I should say, sprezzatura, reflected in the expression. Oh, it is nothing, my liege. <laughs> okay? When the king says, Chef, that was a fabulous meal. The chef is required by the rules of the court, by the rules of sprezzatura, to say, Oh, it is nothing. And he's supposed to flip his head and, and, um, thank you. And, and flip his hands and say, it is nothing, my liege. All right? I, I know, boy, this is a long detour. I'm just having fun telling the story, you can tell. Well, it turns out that word, sprezzatura, has spilled over into painting. Now, some in the modern art, ugly art, political propaganda, philosophical art movement, have used this as a criticism of beautiful art. I think they're stupid. <laughs> no, I think they're wrong. I should say that's ad hominem, isn't it? If I just say they're stupid, that's dismissive. No, no, no. They are misguided indeed. But um, they're, they're completely, I think they're wrong. So ignore those people. <laughs> I, this has to do with me struggling to paint this figure. The point is, by the time I finish this little figure, and doggone, is it not taking me a while? It is. Is it irritating? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Because sometimes you paint stuff and bam, it just happens. First stroke and you're done. There's no messing around like all this junk that I'm doing. All of a sudden, wait a minute, all of a sudden this little guy here, he just developed a hoodie, which I kind of like. That was, not, that was not the original plan, but I kind of like it. Let's see, if it. let's see if that sticks. It may or may not. I'm, I'm, a terrible, um, I'm terrible at fashion. I don't care about clothes. I ignore clothes. I'm kind of a typical, uh, maybe, I don't know if I'm a typical guy. My two-year-old grandson loves clothes. <laughs> <laughs> he has strong opinions about what he's going to wear today. <laughs> it's so funny. All right, so the, the, point, <laughs> the point that I am very laboriously making, <laughs> I'm, not very, I'm not being very sprechatura-ish <laughs> in my description. I recognize this very, to, my, to my undying shame. Um, the point is, when all is said and done, 
on this little figure right here, the viewer must get the feeling, in, in my opinion, in good painting, that it was done like this. Like it was done with, it is nothing, my liege. Oh, it was nothing. It just fell off my brush. I just gave my brush a flit and a whack, and behold, this young man playing chess flew off my brush. Am I making sense? That, in fact, is a pretty darn good expression, description of good painting. That's what good painting looks like. That is, in fact, what, as we all know, what John Singer Sargent was a freaking master at. This, the feeling of airiness, of, oh, it was nothing. No, no. It, oh, how long that, this, how long did this figure take me? Oh, pfft. 20, 30 seconds. Really? Yeah, really. It was nothing. <laughs> I'm lying through my teeth, right? <laughs> that right there, that might be some of the best painting teaching I have ever done. I'm, I hope I'm being facetious, but, but that was, that was good teaching. That is what, that is what good painting is. Oh, nothing, my leash. Nothing, nothing. It just, it just fell off my brush. Oh yeah, I, I nearly fell asleep when I was doing it. I was so, I was so disengaged. I wasn't really paying attention at all. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> it's a big, fat, bald-faced lie. How long have I been working on that guy? 15 minutes? Good grief. Now, just, just since I've gone this far on this ridiculous, uh, whatever, teaching moment, um, why am I spending so much time? Well, I, that's, I hope it's quite obvious. It's because this is absolutely the psychological focal point of the whole painting, are these two figures right here, right? So, man, I had better... Th th okay, th yeah, this puts in perspective everything I've been saying. I had better get these right, right? Because it's, it's the focal point of the painting. Now, you could argue about that, whether it is the visual focal point, whether it is or not, it is certainly the psychological focal point, right? I'd better get it right, but it better not look overworked. That's sprezzatura, okay? Not overworked. The opposite of overworked, you could say, is sprezzatura. All right, now, this is a little bit overdrawn. I don't mean like overdrawn like a bank. I don't mean like my checking account. <laughs> I mean over, like I drew it too much, okay? I got two fingers in a rag. Well, that hardly did anything. We're gonna do that again. I, I, I talk about this fairly often and demonstrate it periodically. This is the, this is the intentional mess up. When you find that you've overdrawn something, that means you've drawn it too much. This is one of the tricks that you can employ. You simply mess it up. Now, and I'm going to, I often do that, and I, but I don't often come back. I always say, now you can come back and touch it up if you need to. And as a matter of fact, today that's exactly what I am going to do. I'm going to come back and touch it up. After I've overdrawn it, then I overmessed it. Are you with me? Are you following me? So now I'm going to come back into some of the places where I scratched through and just, just a touch here and there. And all of this, do you, you understand that everything I've been doing on this for the last, hello, for the last 20 minutes, however long I've been working on it, has been to achieve this perfect balance between similitude, that is realism, and interesting marks or um, looseness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, does that make sense? So I'm st and I'm still working on it, as you can see. Now. So after rushing, brushing my fingers through it, I have, and I, I am getting quite. By the way, I'm getting quite happy with it. It it is going to work. Um, 
I now see I need to mix up a little bit. Whatever color this car is back here, it's kind of a, it's, it's gray really, but it's a mixture. It's of, of brown and blue and yellow. <laughs> anyway, the, the man, this young man's, uh, could be a young woman now, but anyway, his or her flesh tone. Look how slow, carefully I'm doing that. Is there a place for careful, careful brushmanship? Of course. Would you want to paint the entire painting that way? Of course not. <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, by doing what I'm doing right here, by painting the, the background, by negative painting, did, did you, anybody notice? I am here, I am negative painting this face and this head, which is the correct order. All right, now contrary to you guys who are just learning how to paint stuff that looks like stuff, that's first half the art journey. Second half the art journey, kind of all the rules change. And, and I'm not now trying to make stuff that looks like stuff. I'm trying to make stuff that looks like paint. And painting the faraway object on top of the close object creates a momentary flutter of confusion that the brain experiences as pleasure, specifically aesthetic pleasure. A little messy there again. All right, I'm going to leave that. I, I'm probably done with that character. Uh, you can see how long that took. That was, that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> but I got her done, and it looks... Sprezzatura ish. <laughs> I've 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 referred to that expression many times over the years. I don't think I've ever done quite such a long tirade. So congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You just suffered through the 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 longest <laughs> Sprezzatura tirade <laughs> so far in my long history. <laughs> It had to be done. It had to be done. <laughs> I haven't even hardly started this character over here. All right, I'm going to crawl my way across the table. We need to get some chess men. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if the radical women's movement is going to go after chess pieces and say that it's no longer appropriate for us to call them chess men. They are chess pieces. I would re retort by saying, yeah, but they're all going to get killed. That's why they're men. <laughs> and those of us who are good men are not in favor of killing our women. No matter what you say. <laughs> all right, that's as far as I'm going to go down that dangerous journey. Some of you are saying, too late, chauvinist pig. <laughs> All right, there's, a, there's chess men. I think that's good enough. Actually, I can come in and do just a little bit of pencil, not so much for the realism, just for the texture of it. All right. I don't know about you. I think that I think that looks like a chess table. Um, and I am strangely finding myself in need of just a little break. No, and this time I really don't mean a bathroom break. <laughs> you know, it's kind of what's the word? Um, Euphemism, euphemism for I gotta go to the potty. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not. I really, I really, I'm in need of a mental break. So let me think for a minute. So either I'm doing this experiment where, yeah, I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna stick with it. So here's what we're gonna do. I am gonna end this broadcast and I'm gonna end Daily Art Adventure number 600 and whatever this was, 75 or something. And uh, I am going to take a little break and drink some of my ginger ale. 
<laughs> um, I'm going to work a little bit on the painting. Um, and I'll, I will start another broadcast when I come back so that you guys, you faithful regulars, will indeed get a notification. So let, let's, go, let's go ahead here and read your delightful comments. <laughs> I appreciate your company. I really do. Although tonight I'm going to appreciate even more getting this painting finished. I will not be... Nice shot of my beard there, eh? I will, <laughs> I will not be a painting tomorrow. I'm teaching an art class tomorrow night. Um, probably won't broadcast. I have some stuff I need to do and broadcast tomorrow. So I will not be painting on the street tomorrow. I'm sorry, that's what I mean to say. I might be painting at home. Got a couple projects I'd, I'd love to share with you. And, uh, but Friday morning, I may, I may be out on the street Friday morning. That would be a switch. And you guys in Europe, <laughs> I'd actually be in the middle of the day for you. So we wouldn't be in the middle of the night for you. Muskie, good evening to all. You must, you must, are you somewhere east of us, Muskie? Oh, Muskie, you asked a really good question a long time ago at six o'clock, nearly an hour ago. Forgive me, I don't know if you're still here or not. Let's try, is the real painting about texture or does this greatly affect the overall look? Yes, it's about texture. Yes, you are exactly correct. It is about texture. It is the texture of the scumbling that is unpleasant. I hope you're still watching. I hope you catch this in reruns, if you will. It is exactly the texture of the scumbling is unpleasant. And it is coming back with what I call, you have called real painting is the proper texture. I could even go more in depth because uh, I, I'll do it quickly. When you take a brush, and you make a mark on the canvas. <laughs> That's the sound, right? <laughs> when you make a mark, the viewer can identify the mark. They can, more than that, more specifically, they can identify the movement that the, their fellow, fellow human being made when they made that mark. When they can identify with the movement I made, there is a primal lizard brain intuitive connection between me as the artist and them as the viewer. They have a very deep sense of a human being like me was here and made that mark. Does that, does that make sense? So you are correct. Oh, and I answered, <laughs> there I answered it twice. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Muskie, I hope you're still hanging on here. On a recent stream, you mentioned most paintings have too many hard edges. That's right, and too few soft edges. How would you create more softness without scumbling? The, uh, um, the, the answer, good, excellent question, fantastic. The answer is by making the edges of your single stroke soft and feathery so that the single stroke is not hard edged all the way around. Does that make sense? Very good question. I'll let it go with that. Hello, Barbara. Thank you so much. I look forward to shipping your painting off to you, hopefully tomorrow. Joe, you finally caught me live. Glad, glad, glad you, you, glad you did that. And Kenzo, that's a new name. Good to have you on board. I like how the painting is going. Is it just me? Does it look like it's snowing? <laughs> yes, it did. It did look like it's snowing. <laughs> I'm going to try to remedy that. I don't want it to be a snow scene. Uh, I think the, the answer there will be mostly texture, some of the pencil, some hard edges, and, and pencil. Um, but yeah, it, for a while it was so soft edged all over that it did look snowing. I don't mind snow, I like snow paintings, but I don't want this, don't want this to look like it's snowing. Hello Benji, good to have you on board. Uh, Jolie, um, you, if you have subscribed to my channel, uh, go back to the, sub hit the subscribe button right next to it is a bell or if you subscribe they ask you you get a dialog box do you want to be notified and you click yes sometimes there's even options about how to be notified um, but in the olden days with face with YouTube if you clicked subscribe you would be notified then they changed the rules now you have to not only subscribe but you have to hit a bell 
At least the last I checked, it was, it was still a bell icon. No doubt that'll change too, but that's how you get notified. All right, so break time. I expect, let me see, it's seven o'clock here. Um, I'm guessing I'll be back within the hour. Uh, so, you know, that's quite a long break. And for those of you who, who in fact do want to catch the rest um, of the painting, um, you know, you don't want to have to keep hovering around your, your screen and coming back and, is he back yet? So you can just relax. If you have the bell clicked and you'll get either a beep or an email or something will come up. My, on, on my case, I get a, something comes up on my screen. You know, so-and-so is now broadcasting. It comes up on my computer uh, and sometimes on my phone. All right, thanks, gang. Enjoy it. Oh, one more comment. Got it, thanks. Thanks, Joe Lee. All right, bye, y'all.